Hi, and welcome to this follow-up tutorial on setting up a private server for use in Jamulus. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the program called Jamulus Server. Uh, you more than likely downloaded this along with Jamulus. It kind of sneaks it in. It's just a simple little add-on that gets the server going. Um, so because my server is already going, I'm going to open it a different way, but you would just simply click on the program as you would normally open up any program and you come up with a screen that looks like this. Now, once you're here, uh, if you want to, as a first step, just simply make a public server, it, all it takes is the click of a mouse. <laughs> once you do, you've registered a private server. Um, you just specify the genres, the name of your server, city, country, and so on. You can put a welcome message down at the bottom here if you'd like to be friendly, but it is optional. Uh, and then that's it. And, and honestly, there's not a whole lot much more to this uh, small, very small program. Uh, once people connect to our server, you'd be able to find out a little bit of information about them, um, including their jitter buffer size. Uh, now, uh, the only reason that I bring this up uh, is because uh, that's a, it's just a fancy way of saying how, how, how good is their connection going. And so if you're connecting with a whole bunch of different students and you've got a few that are having connection issues, but you're not exactly sure who it is, um, come back to this page and it will pretty much uh, uh, very easily tell you who the likely culprits are because you want to see small numbers there. And I'm pretty sure that they even show up in green, yellow, and red, red being no good. Uh, so uh, that student would need to do a little bit of troubleshooting. Um, however, uh, that's pretty much it for this page. If you are coming across this video and uh, your only reason for setting up a Jamula server would be so that you and your adult friends can get together, do a little bit of singing or a little bit of playing or jam, if you will, uh, then th there's really no need to make your server private. Uh, so you, you can just sort of stop right here uh, unless you want to, which is totally fine. However, if you are teaching school aged children, I, I highly recommend making a private server. Um, there's just no security on public servers. Um, the people that would possibly come into your server can't do anything uh, malicious or harmful uh, to uh, your computer or those that are also connected into your server. Um, but um, they can just enter the server um, and then make themselves known however they choose to. Um, and so with, uh, with, with kids, that's not really the best idea. So let's make our server private. So we're going to click off of this button we're going to minimize that window. And now we need to do two things in order to make our server, our private server accessible by other people. Now, there are probably two things that you have not done before and you might already start feeling a little bit of churning of the stomach, but I hadn't, I didn't know how to do this until a couple weeks ago and it's pretty straightforward um, as long as you just keep your head about you, okay? Uh, so the first thing we need to do is to log into our router, okay? Because we need to open up ports on our router. If you can think of your router as sort of being uh, your house, um, ports are like bricks of that house, okay? There's an enormous number of them, 60,000 something. Um, we're just gonna remove just a couple to give people a way to get into our home network. And so in order to do that, you need to uh, log into your router. Now, there are a whole bunch of different companies that make routers. Uh, so it's really impossible for me to go through all of them. I suppose I could. Um, but the easiest thing for you to do is to just Google log into the name of the company router. Um, in this case, I have a Netgear, um, but you can just simply click on Belkin, if you will. And then all of a sudden it gives you exact directions uh, for what you need to do in order to get into your, your, your router. Okay. Uh, for me, uh, I use, uh, I type in routerlogin.net, not sure if that's going to work for you, um, and I hit enter. Here a little window pops up, 
okay? And uh, it has uh, it asks for a username and password. This is not your Wi-Fi name and your Wi-Fi password. Um, this is something separate to do with the router itself. Now, if you have no idea what these things are, don't worry. Oftentimes the username is admin and the password might be admin too. It might also be password. There might be no password required at all. There's not an enormous amount of safety uh, uh, security involved in, in, in getting into your router once you're already in a network. Um, and so, yeah, I would try those things. If they don't work, um, see if you can find uh, any documentation that came along with your router. Um, do a quick little bit of Googling. You can also reset this username and password. Don't let, uh, don't let a couple failed attempts uh, deter you from getting this done. My information is already saved in, so I am going to click sign in and I get taken to the front page of my router. It's pretty basic looking and it's going to give us just a little bit of information. We've got some good internet going right now. Uh, do not worry, this is not the password to my wireless. I changed it because this is going to be a public YouTube video. Uh, so I do not recommend the password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so here we are and to do what we need to do this is an advanced function. Uh, so you're going to want to look for, your screen won't look just like this, but you will have some kind of advanced screen or advanced options. Now, if I click on this advanced option, um, a piece of information about um, our network is going to come up that I don't want on a public video. So I just want you to imagine that I clicked that little advanced tab there and we get sent to a tab that looks like this. Um, now, you have all of these different options on the side here, different menus. And for mine, I went to advanced setup and port forwarding. Um, port forwarding is what we're looking for, okay? So if you are having trouble finding it, you can just simply turn to Google. I don't know what we did before we had Google. And you could just simply say, um, you could type port forwarding and then the, the brand of your router and they'll be able to tell you how to navigate to get there. But this is what we're looking for, port forwarding, okay? Once we're at this screen right here, we are going to add a custom service. Oh. Okay, hold on one second. There we go. Back at that page again, we are going to add a custom service. <laughs> and once we click on that, we end up uh, with uh, a couple of boxes that we need to fill in. The very first thing is service name. Um, it recommends that you choose Jamulus. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't need to be anything specific. However, Jamulus is, it gets straight to the point. Uh, in terms of protocol, you see these two, uh, three uh, letter acronyms right here. Um, it says that you only need to choose UDP. UDP is the type of information that uh, Jamulus sends back and forth. I have no idea what UDP means. I also don't have any idea what TCP means, so I just decided to include both of them. <laughs> I don't think it really matters. Um, someone can comment on this video if you find this and you're horrified by the fact that I've now included both of those, or you can just try UDP and see if it works, UDP by itself, but I just chose both of them. Um, and so next we go down here and it says external port range. So this is being very specific about the bricks in the wall that we want to open up to other people. And we're going to choose this set of numbers. It's 22123 dash 22125. So that opens up the ports in that range. Now, Jamulus, if you want to be very specific, uh, needs the port 22124. It was recommended that I do a range instead of a specific number. I don't think it matters either way, but you should probably just keep it a range just in case. And then the last and most important thing you want to do is you need to specify which device uh, is allowed to be communicated with once people get through uh, this, this, um, uh, these bricks that we are opening up here to keep using the same analogy. Um, and so we want them to go to the desktop, which is where my Jamulus server is. 
and then take a look. I want you to write down um, this IP address is not um, uh, specific to just us. Your IP address might look exactly like this. This is sort of your local address, kind of like you have rooms in a house to continue with our analogy. Um, this is our desktop room and, and it is located at 192.168.1.2. Now that's going to become important uh, in a few minutes and I will tell you why. So we're gonna click to specify that. We're gonna remember what this number is. It might not be two for you at the end. It might be something different. Also your IP address might look completely different than mine. That's okay too. Make sure it's connected and then just write that down because you're going to need it in a bit. Now once you've done this, you click apply and it should pop up down here as a new service. It talks about our external ports and internal ports, the IP address over on the right hand side, which was the one that was specific for my computer. And there's our Jamulus right there. And that's it. That's all we need to do. Um, in terms of the router, I should say, we have one more step to take in order to make things uh, work. And this is where we're going to diverge a bit for Mac and PC. So Mac users, you can pay attention to this because um, uh, honestly, most of most of these steps are are very similar in 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 idea, but just slightly different in wording. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to open up these same ports on our computer's firewall. Um, each individual device has its own little separate security. Most Windows users use Windows Defender. Um, and so if you use that, you're just simply going to start to type in Defender and you end up with Windows Defender Firewall that you can then click on. If you use a different security system, um, you're going to want to do it through that. Um, and Good luck with that. I'm not exactly sure uh, how to guide you with that, but um, again, Google is amazing. So we're going to click on Windows Defender Firewall and we get uh, this sort of um, archaic looking screen that might already start to make you a little nervous. Um, <laughs> this is the way that all computer screens used to look and we are going to, to go to inbound rules. Um, now you can see that there's a whole list of rules that we have here. Um, oftentimes programs that you download, uh, whether they uh, whether they be um, games that you might play uh, or other applications that need to send information out or bring information in, um, there are rules that are created um, so that the, so that these programs can very specifically do this without trouble. Um, now, if, um, no, I didn't know how I was gonna finish that sentence, so I'm gonna move on. Uh, so let's create a new one for Jamulus, okay? Uh, so we are going to go over here on the side to new rule. Um, and we want to be very specific about the ports that we open up, okay? Um, and so we are going to go to next we are going to define, now we do need to say UDP for this, okay? And we are going to specify which ports we want. We're gonna do the same ones, the 22123 to 22125. And then we're going to click next. We're going to have it allow the connection and then we're going to click next again. Um, actually, I should say uh, that um, you might want to, our computer doesn't leave our home, um, but if you are taking a laptop around and um, you just want to specify uh, more where you would like these ports opened, this is a bit beyond um, my knowledge, um, but uh, take a look at this. If, if you are not setting this up on a computer that is always going to be on your home network, it might be worth taking a look at this, but we are going to click next. We are going to call this Jamulus. I have about six Jamulus things set up already. Um, and so now we're adding a seventh or whatever it might be. And there it is right up at the top of the screen. And that is it. 
Now, let me walk Mac users. Now, uh, uh, PC users, it is now your turn to kind of tune me out a little bit. Um, P uh, Mac users, um, I will put a, a link to this support page um, at, at, at the in the description of the video. Um, but right here um, is a, a wonderful description of exactly what you need to do that you just saw me do for PC. You're going to open up system preferences. You're going to go to security or security and privacy. You're gonna click on the firewall. And then it says to click the lock icon in the preference pane uh, to unlock things. And in order to do that, you're going to need um, the admin and password name. Now, that is not for your router. That's not the same thing from earlier. That's a different one. It's very possible um, that you just need to click OK, that this, that this information is already saved into your computer. Again, if you have a separate administrator name and password, um, I, I, I don't know how to help you with that. Um, and then we're going to go into the firewall options once we're running this as an administrator. And then you're going to click an add application. Okay, you're going to select this app, Jamulus, uh, or I should say Jamulus server. No. Yes, well, why don't you add both Jamulus and Jamulus server if you can, just to be sure you're going to add both of those and then you're going to click OK. Uh, apologies for not knowing which one it was, um, but adding both uh, won't, won't hurt. Once you do those things, you've done exactly the same thing that I just walked PC users through and our server should be good to go. Okay, so if I click back on this real quick, Oh, it let me know that it's already open. And so I'm gonna go right here. I'm going to open up my Jamulus server. Nothing looks different right here. However, if I go into Jamulus, last step here. I'm going to connect to a server because um, I want to keep using this microphone the way that it is. Um, however, when I go over here to connect, take a look at this bottom box. Okay, this bottom box is where you needed to remember that 192 number that we were looking at when we were setting up those ports on our router. Okay, this is the number that you will use when you are at home to connect to your server. This is not what other people use, okay? This is what you will use, okay? You type that number in, you click connect, and your server will work. Again, I'm going to stop right there because I don't want to lose uh, control of my microphone. Um, however, that will connect you to your server and hopefully it works just fine. Now, next, the very last thing that we need to do is we need to find what the number is that you are going to give to other people in order to um, uh, in order to have them connect to your server. This is your public IP address. Uh, this is the number that was going to show up when I logged into my router that I didn't want to be seen. Um, it's 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 not the end of the world if um, if. If, if your public IP address starts getting spread around, but you just certainly don't want it on anything that's going to be completely public like a video like this. Um, how do you find that address? Um, you can just simply Google how many times I should start getting a little bit of pay from Google. You just simply Google, what's my IP address? Now, as soon as I clicked on this, my IP address that I've been trying to avoid would pop up on the screen. It's a collection of about nine numbers with dots spread throughout. Um, and that is the number that you're going to want to have um, your students or, or friends, fellow musicians, whatever it might be, you're going to want that, uh, them to put that information in that bottom bar so that they can connect to you. You, to connect to yourself, use that 192 number. They are going to have to use whatever number pops up when you say, what's my IP address, okay? So I think that is pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, please comment on the video. Um, please send me a message, whatever it might be. I'm really happy to help. And um, 
I hope I hope you have success and I hope you have a great time making music with other people.